chat about historic costuming, vintage style, disability issues, and whatever else falls out of my mouth. So today, I'm dealing with a bit of a conundrum, so I kind of accidentally made myself an 18th century outfit by hand. So what happened is I bought some stuff from the awesome people at Burnley and Trowbridge. Burnley and Trowbridge, not sponsored, just a fan. And I bought this pattern from J.P. Ryan. And I was waiting for some white linen to arrive, and I was desperately trying to procrastinate on editing a video, so, so I hand-stitched a petticoat and a cap. The pattern was from the American Duchess book, The Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. Then I made a jacket and a pocket. Can anyone else guess what problem I had at that point? No stays. So I had initially bought the Augusta Stays pattern online because I have literally no patience and I love online patterns. But it has only a partial front lacing and I really wanted a full front lacing so that it would make it easier for me to dress myself. So then I bought the American Duchess Simplicity pattern for Stays and it took literally forever. When it arrived, I was hesitant. I wanted to try the historic technique and this pattern being from the big four. Does anyone else always hear that in like a booming, scary voice? The big four. Anyway, big four patterns are designed for conventional construction. So now I have two patterns and no idea what I'm doing. I also have an unwearable outfit until I manage to put these things together. So I thought, Maybe I'll try to add a front lacing to the Augusta Stays. And I'll make up a stomacher. I suppose at this point I should just confess that I want this outfit from Bird's Eye Productions. Anyway, I decided to go with it. So I got started. So the Augusta pattern comes in two flavors, theatrical and historic. We'll be going historic today. I very quickly discarded the idea of making changes to this pattern because of both time and the intimidation factor. I will very likely use the methods I've learned from the Augusta stays on the American Duchess pattern later on when I have access to actual boning and a little more time for fitting. The first step is always printing out the pattern and cutting and taping it together. Check out my video on internet patterns here if you aren't sure what I mean. So I had seen some other people have success with making a mock-up out of cardboard. But, instead, to do some kind of quick fitting before I get started, I was quickly going to stitch them together and tape on some zip ties, just to kind of check the fit. In the waist in particular, as I am notoriously short-waisted. Once it's on, I'm better able to see how it fits. So, I quickly basted it together and it looks like it'll fit. I'll probably cut the tabs a little bit higher to deal with the waist issue, but it's not terrible. Now that I'm ready to move ahead, I can assemble all my materials. So I'm going to flatline on some canvas for another strength layer and a fashion layer of striped linen. That's the part I got from Berlin Probit. So in order to try for a more accurate cut, I used the jean or the denim itself as a pattern piece. So first I basted it on, then I cut out the now attached panels. And I did the same thing with the linen pieces. And for once, I had everything relatively well cut and accurately pieced together. Once all of the layers are stitched together on each piece, I started to work on laying out my boning channels. I'm using kind of a mixed bag of leftover synthetic baleen, industrial strength zip ties, and a few slim steels I had left over from that I was gonna put in the back lacing panel. For the boning channels, I was going to look at a combination of corsets and crinolines by Nora Waugh and then the Augusta pattern instructions. And there was a blog post from American Duchess as well. And I was going to use a ruler. The ruler is important. In the end, I ended up following mostly the Augusta pattern and fudged it a little bit. Not all of my boning material was the same width, which was a bit of a challenge. To mark the boning channels, I used a white gel pen. Honestly, finding a way to mark these channels on the dark denim was a huge time-consuming challenge. I started with chalk, which was messy and wore off. Pencil didn't show up. Marker didn't show up. But I'm really pleased with how the gel pen worked. 
it stood out well, and while most certainly is not historically accurate, it is now hidden from the strength layers inside and nobody gets to see it anymore. With all the boning channels laid out, I indulged in some machine sewing. I did hand stitch the rest, but I was not going to spend the next month working on this. So I sewed some boning channels, and then some more, and then some more. Seriously, there are so many boning channels on this. With the channels all finally sewn, I then got to experience the joy of stuffing them all. Um, yeah, so all the boning channels are sewn. And now I'm trying to put stuff in them for the extra pattern because God forbid I work on just one project at a time. So I have both front pieces completely full of boning bits. And I started doing eyelets because why do one thing at a time? Um, now I'm working on these ones and these ones. Oh, and don't forget these ones. I thought those were two of them. Where are the other problems? Unfortunately, I only have this much left, so I think tomorrow I'm going to have to hit a store and buy better, thicker, more zip ties. Because I'll just start off zip ties. But yeah, so that is the update on where we are so far. I am in Boning Channel Hell. That is where I am. Boning Channel <laughs> This was probably the moment where I most regretted my budget-heavy decision not to buy synthetic whale whalebone. I liked the price of the zip ties, and now that the stays are done, I think they work great. However, that's a really big however. Cutting them to size and sticking them in the channels was nothing less than a nightmare. I had to trim each one, and the little pieces of the ends went everywhere. I am still vacuuming them up a month later. I'm quite convinced that they are related to glitter, a substance known as the herpes of craft supplies. Anyway, with all of the channels sewn and stuffed, boned, there are no words for this that sound decent, are there? Anyway, it was time to, st to stitch some eyelets, which promptly took another hundred years. Eyelets can be kind of calming, in between the part where you're fighting with the awl. I don't have a proper awl, I have one that came with a screwdriver set, but it works and that's the important part. Also, I realized around this point that I had screwed up one of the very first steps. At the very beginning, you clip and then turn in the seam allowance. At the time, I wasn't sure how far to turn it in. Upon finishing the stays, I realized that the seam allowance is supposed to cover the eyelets, providing more stability and finishing the edges should you choose a lining. However, because one of my fabrics was thick denim, it was scavenged from my stash, which was and it was super sturdy. It just didn't turn like other fabrics, so I didn't turn it in far enough. This isn't a huge issue because the eyelets are plenty stable with the denim and some not quite historical slim steels to support them. However, if and when I put a lining in, the raw edges will not be covered. And now I had my panels prepared. It was time to baste everything together again along the seam lines for a fitting. So I basted it together and I tried it on, and I really liked it for the most part. I was right that I needed to cut the tabs up higher, but that wasn't too big of a deal. So, with that decided, I took out all the basting. I seriously considered not taking it out, but I wanted to do this right. And then I was supposed to churn in all the edges and stitch them down. It was about this point that I realized I had made another boo-boo. For some reason, I had thought I was supposed to sew the straps right sides together and then turn them inside out. I don't know where that idea came from. It's nowhere in the instructions. I appear to have just made it up in my own head. Okay, so what I've got going on here is I had thought I'd read ahead in the pattern directions for my stays, and so I had stitched my straps together and turned them right side out. Yeah, it turns out that's not what I'm meant to be doing. So these are useless because I've already done the eyelets, so I can't unpick them. Well, I could, but it would take longer than it will to just cut out new ones. So I've got two more out of my linen here. I probably should have matched the stripes, but I managed to get them both into like one teeny little corner because I'd like to use the linen itself to make something for one of my kids. 
not sure which kid yet, but we'll get there. Um, and so I'm gonna back them in my white canvas because the jean I've discovered really just doesn't look very good and you can see it, so. Yeah, so to do this, what I'm gonna do, ugh, sorry. Um, the trick of it is making sure I get both straps pointing. You can kind of see it's got a lean to it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm hoping you can see that. Yeah, you can see there. Um, there's a lean to it. So I need to make sure I've got one strap going one way and then the other one going the other way. Otherwise, I'm going to have um, uh, two straps that go the same way and one shoulder that needs to go the other way, which is not how shoulders work typically. All right, so I'm going to ah, poke myself with, I'm going to poke myself with pins. That is what I'm going to do. So this is my pattern piece. So you can see that I have printed them off and then taped them together. I, I do have another video about how to use an internet pattern. Um, they're really great for people like me who ha who are highly impatient. I'm highly impatient because, well, I'm highly impatient because I'm highly impatient. I like to blame it on ADHD though. Um, to do the original pieces, I had um, basted them together so that they came out really, really exactly the same size. But uh, I don't know that I'm gonna bother with this just for the two straps. Hmm, can I do these two at a time? I bet I could too, ha ha. So the nice thing about both of these fabrics, unlike the jean that I was using, the denim, is that neither of them really has a right side or a wrong side. So that also gives me a little bit of leeway. And I know I'm not being terribly particular about the grain because again, they are the straps. They are not the most, I don't know, strong making bit of this whole little creation. I've been looking at the instructions on how to attach these suckers and I think I have it figured out. I am not 100% sure yet, so. Um, yeah, which we shall see where we get to on that one. So I'm trying to keep this in frame, which is very difficult to do. If you watched my um, petticoat video, you'll know that uh, my camera doesn't let me know what it's doing when I'm doing it. So I have to kind of guess. So I know that mo this part of the desk is in frame. I don't know if the rest of it is or not. So we shall, whoops, now I've thrown it on the floor. All right, so that gives me two of these. And what I'm gonna do now is trace the um, basting lines on them with my highly specialist tool here being a pencil. Oof. Um, I'm using a pencil because pencils are easy to get. They leave a good mark on something like the white canvas there and they wash out decently. And again, this is gonna be literally next to my shoulder. And if, yeah, it's gonna be next to my shoulder. I was gonna say, or I might even squish it between the layers, but if I do that, I won't be able to see it, will I? So again, I need to make sure I have one that goes this way and one that goes this way. With the straps made correctly, I could backstitch them on and then had saw all kinds of fun trying to figure out what they were talking about on how to fell down that seam. Okay, so I managed to not get a shot of me putting the straps on my stays. So I'm going to use this little example setup to show you how to do it. So as it says right on it, these are the right side of the stays, pretending. These are my straps. So I'm gonna put right sides to right sides. I probably should have written straps right or something. But anyway, this is pretty much just like, you know, regular sewing. And then we're gonna back stitch. Got it, I'm in frame. All the way-ish across. And 
on the actual straps too, I believe you leave the two sides empty on either side where you basted. it. Like you'll have basted it up here and up here, and so you'll leave those two sides empty. Alright, so now I'm going to flip this whole sucker around to the wrong side. So this would be the inside where I would have my boning channels. Instead, you just get marker. So what we're going to do is clip along the inside of here. So I'm going to clip down the seam allowance of my, the actual stays, not the straps. And then kind of fold it in to the strap. Now remember, these are parts here are going to get covered up by your binding. When you bind the top, I should just stab myself. So, now we're going to do this like we would do any felt stitch. I always like to wrap it around my finger Victorian style. I know a lot of people like to do Bernadette's thing where she pins it to a pillow. I find the pillow gets away. I would try to stab myself. I might stab myself, but my finger stays where, it's, where it has been put. And if you're ever wondering why I don't paint my nails pretty for all these up close hand shots, the poking myself with a needle is why, because I would just scrape them to bits. And I'm under the impression that scraped up painted nails look worse than unpainted nails that you can't tell are beat to heck because they're unpainted. And I'm using red so you guys can hopefully see this very clearly. So again, I'm just kind of tucking the strap seam allowance around what remains of the state, the actual body of the stays seam allowance. And this took me forever. It was like the one thing I really did feel the directions were not super clear on, but maybe it was just because it was one of those things where you have to do it or see it to understand it. So then I'm just gonna finish. Again, on my actual stays, I did these, all these stitches way smaller and tighter because, you know, I don't want them to fall off. But since this is going in the scrap pile as soon as I'm done with this, there you go. A strip. So you can see it's invisible from this side. And then you've got a nice softly felt seam on that side. So the directions read 21. Trim lower seam allowance, stay body pieces, down to one quarter of an inch or six millimeters. 22. Fold seam of straps F over cut down seam allowance to form flat felled seam. This was one of those things that happens a lot in patterns where it made sense when I went to do it, but reading about it made me crazy because I just couldn't picture it. Sometimes you just have to do the thing. If that doesn't work or you're too nervous to try, you can try it on a scrap fabric and make a mini mock cup. Okay, so with the straps attached and all the edges of the pieces turned in and fell down, it was time to do the binding bound the bottom first. I bound the bottom because A, it seemed harder, so I wanted to get it over and done with first because that is the smart and responsible thing to do. And B, the bones were falling out the bottom because of gravity. Stupid gravity. So, binding. I was using one inch wide cotton twill tape. Off in a dream world where money did not affect my decisions. And wow, the things I would make in that imaginary world. I was planning to use linen tape in that imaginary world. But money and time were against me here, so that didn't happen. Twill tape is fine. It's just fine. Right? Anyway, so I followed the directions on the pattern, and I watched all the tutorials. Seriously, there's a list of them in the video description, and there is a lot. And with all of those resources assembled, I pretty much winged it. No word of a lie, I just sewed the things. I'm pretty sure that's heresy of some kind. Anyway, once I bound the bottom, I realized something important. Mainly that I didn't have enough twill tape to bind the top. So I had to wait until A, I could afford to buy more, and B, I could find some. I went to two different stores, and that's a lot of stores. While I was waiting, I decided to do an optional thing and used 
half inch twill tape to sew over the joins and the stays. This was again for two different reasons, because it adds strength to them and because it hides the absolutely hideous whip stitches I used to join the panels together. A mask order was just about to come into effect in my area and it had just been announced that the kids will need to wear masks on the school bus in the hallways at school. So fabric stores are looking like a very masked concert or like a very masked toy store at Christmas or some other kind of appropriate metaphor for very flipping crowded. Therefore, after waiting for a lot of time at both the cutting table and the cash, I had a little under two meters, which sounds like a lot, but after lining it up, I realized it wasn't going to be enough. But since it was all I had, and there was no way on this earth I was going back out there, I used the one inch twill tape for the top of the stays and then used the same half inch twill tape I had used to cover the gaps between the panels to go around the straps. Because they didn't have the same kinds of strength layers as the main body of the stays, I could get away with a slimmer tape. Just barely. And that, my friends, is it. My stays were finally finished, which meant that I could wear them to the event I went to in August. There's a video about it here. Hooray! I really like the shape they give me, and I'm especially fond of the way the stripes sit on the side. The pattern itself was very well written, and for the most part it was very easy to follow with clear instructions. On the other hand, I seriously regret not making the pattern with the front lacing. After spending the best part of a year and a half head down in costume, I didn't realize how mystifying spiral lacing was. It's very hard to find a decent ladies maid in the modern day. I had two friends and my sister help me lace up on separate occasions, and none of them understood what I was trying to describe. We got there in the end, but I am pretty sure that I will also be making front lacing stays at some point. My other big regret, which I've already talked about a little bit, is the zip ties. Now that they're in, you really wouldn't notice the difference, and they were good and they were cheap. However, they were an absolute pain in the neck and some other places too to work with. Part of that's my fault because I tend to let the little bits fly off in all directions, but I also did that with a synthetic whaleboat and I never had this problem. All in all, the stays were super comfy once they were made and on. I wore them all day on Saturday at the gathering, and I experienced no pain and few problems. So this one goes down as a win. If I make another pair of stays, it will be a while down the road, after I finish my 1860s gown. So keep smiling, friends. Bye-bye.